Lipid transport within our bodies is complicated by the fact that lipids, especially triglycerides and cholesterol esters, are insoluble. That means we require certain things called lipoprotein particles to help facilitate transport of lipids from one place to another. In this video, we'll talk about what lipoproteins are and why they're necessary. We're going to talk about the main carrier particles for cholesterol and triglycerides, including two different transport processes, one starting in the liver and one ending in the liver. We're going to use this knowledge to explain why somebody might have changes in their HDL or LDL levels, and we'll explain the role of lipoprotein lipase in finishing transport and delivery into tissues. Lipids can be obtained in multiple ways. They can be generated from our diet. In this case, they're packaged as triglycerides within the enterocyte and are used chylomicrons for transport. These are generated in the small intestine and deliver lipids to the muscle and adipose. Lipids can also exist in our liver. In this case, they're formed into particles called VLDL, very large density lipoproteins. These are transported from the liver, again, to other peripheral tissues. This is in contrast to adipocytes. In the case of adipocytes, lipids are released in the form of free fatty acids through a process called lipolysis. This doesn't require lipoproteins because free fatty acids bound to albumin can be transported without packaging into triglycerides. Shown here is a schematic showing both chylomicron processes and VLDL processes. Chylomicrons are generated in the intestinal cell. They acquire specific apolipoproteins, including ApoB48. They then deliver the lipids, the triglycerides and cholesterol esters, to peripheral tissues, mostly muscle cells and adipocytes. Once the chylomicron has been depleted, the chylomicron remnant is then absorbed within the liver. This allows for the recycling of the apolipoproteins and the phospholipids. VLDL, on the other hand, starts in the liver. Those particles are coated by ApoB100. VLDL particles, much like the chylomicrons, then transport triglycerides and cholesterol to peripheral tissues. Those peripheral tissues can then access the lipids, and when those lipids are accessed, the remnant of a VLDL is called a LDL, a low-density lipoprotein. Shown here is what an average lipoprotein might look like. They're coated by a phospholipid, an amphipathic barrier that allows for the solubilization of the neutral lipid core containing triglycerides and cholesterol esters. They also have proteins on the surface, apolipoproteins, such as ApoB100 or ApoB48. These dictate the actual function of the lipoprotein particles. The different particles have different contents of lipids. Chylomicrons, for example, are very large and tend to be mostly triglycerides. VLDL tend to have a little bit less triglycerides and are quite a bit smaller than a chylomicron. LDL, in turn, has much less triglyceride, relatively larger amounts of cholesterol, and are much smaller and much more dense. As I noted, VLDL particles are made in the liver. They're coated with an apolipoprotein particle called ApoB100 and phospholipids, importantly phosphatidylcholine. Once in the circulation, they acquire ApoC2 and ApoC3, as well as ApoE. These coated apolipoprotein particles, the VLDLs, then come in contact with peripheral tissues, such as muscle or adipose. Through the enzyme lipoprotein lipase, lipids can be removed from those particles, resulting in an LDL particle. The LDL particle is then reabsorbed by the liver and its contents recycled. However, if LDL particles are not reabsorbed, they can build up in the blood, and this is causal of cardiovascular disease. On the surface of the myocyte and the adipocyte is a very important enzyme called lipoprotein lipase. It's generated on demand by those particular cells and is secreted outside of the cell and into the extracellular matrix. The LPL particle can then come in contact with a VLDL or a chylomicron. This allows for the breakdown of the triglycerides into fatty acids, which in turn can be absorbed by the adipocyte or the myocyte. Lipoprotein lipase is activated by ApoC2, but it's inactivated by ApoC3. That means whether or not a chylomicron or VLDL has ApoC2 or ApoC3 on it will dictate whether or not it can release those fatty acids into the target cell. In summary, lipid transport has some challenges. It needs to take an insoluble substance such as a triglyceride and transport it somewhere else. This necessitates the role of lipoprotein particles, which contain phospholipids and specific proteins. The function of a lipoprotein particle is dictated by the apolipoproteins on the surface. Delivery inside a cell depends on an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase. This allows the liberation of fatty acids out of the triglycerides and allows them to be transported into the cell. Once a lipoprotein has been depleted, either the remaining LDL or chylomicron remnant can be reabsorbed into the liver. Understanding the physiology of lipoprotein trafficking is of critical importance. LDL particle number is causal of cardiovascular disease, and different people have different diet-based sensitivities to increases in LDL particle number. Understanding the processes by which LDL particles are made 
used and broken down is important for understanding the genetic risk of cardiovascular disease and coming up with more tailored dietary interventions specific to somebody's underlying physiology.